Hi there, my name is Craig Stevens, and I'm bringing you a podcast related to mechanistic and organic organizational structure. The reason for this podcast was originally as a makeup um, class for, for a systems management course 4410. Now, to find the PowerPoint slides that go along with this presentation, uh, go to westbrookstevens.com forward slash organizational dot htm. To contact me, uh, you would contact Craig A. Stevens at westbrookstevens.com. That's my email address. We'll go down the slide a little bit. We'll scroll down the website. And what we'll see, if, if, if you go to that website, you'll come to the words link to, and you'll see organic versus mechanistic in that link, that list of links. You'll see my picture and this presentation, actually. And then you'll see the first slide, and this first slide is OM1. OM1 is titled organic, and organic, and uh, then there are four bullets relate on this slide. The first bullet, if you look directly below me and you're looking at the web page, then you'll see this this uh, this slide. So the first bullet is high rate of change. Now organic organizational structures are are the exact opposite of a bureaucratic organizational structure. So in an organic organizational structure, it's best to have an organic organizational structure if there's a high degree of change or chaos. Now if there's a low rate of change, then it's more bureaucratic. The higher the technology, the higher expectation you would have for an organic culture to go along with your organic organizational structure. The um, bigger differences between people, the more people are differentiated, it lends itself to more organic organizational structure. Now, this is statement on the fourth bullet says, why do business schools have so few classes on structures? Because, and this was something that someone explained to me and someone said to me, so I, report, I recorded it because it made, it, it kind of answers the question. Uh, traditionally, a lot of our theories are based on mechanistic organizational structures. And the more uh, systematic and repeatable you get processes, the more they lean toward a mechanistic organizational structure. So in the 21st century, you've got to figure out a way to get organic cultures mixed with some mechanistic properties. And I'll explain that a little bit later. Now, on this page, there's some other podcasts related. There's one related to a competitor because he gave a really good explanation of people and organic cultures, although he does have a plug for his business in there also. Now, in a mechanistic organizational structure, it's more related to the classical way of doing business and Weber's bureaucracy. Now, a bureaucracy isn't a negative or a positive. A bureaucracy is a type of organization. In some cases, what you want is a bureaucratic type of organization. But um, it is the opposite of organic organizational structures. Um, for example, in a bureaucratic organization, you, you would expect to have low technology and not high technology because of its structural approach. It does not lend itself toward high technology. You expect a low rate of change, whereas organic organizational structures are more, you expect more of a high rate of change. In a highly mechanistic organization, you expect mass production, whereas in organic organizational structures, there's more tendency to focus on, on larger, more complex products. The uh, third bullet talks about World War II and the mentally ill. Uh, during World War II, the people in the workforce had to leave and go to war. Well, that left a big void in our industry at a time when we needed more uh, industrial uh, processes and, and output than any other time in our history. So that left people behind. One group it left behind were the institutionalized mentally ill people. And, and there was uh, several times when the institutions were opened up 
and the people were allowed into manufacturing facilities to do jobs. But that meant you had to simplify those jobs, and you had to proceduralize those jobs, and you had to supervise those jobs, and you had to look over people's shoulders, basically, um, because they were unskilled labor and not used to the work. Now, that is an example of a highly mechanized, mechanistic organizational structure. We talked a little bit about this before in one of the classes. But if you have high regulatory environment, you have tight pollution controls, you have records management controls, so it kind of sounds like healthcare, doesn't it? Then you expect a mechanistic organizational structure, a lot of safety issues. People can die if you do things wrong. Now, can you imagine the workforce that's put into that? It's a highly educated workforce. It's, it's a highly differentiated workforce. It's a highly um, specialized workforce. And in and, and some of those cases, that requires more organic culture forced into a mechanistic organizational structure. So you can see that there could be some problems that, that, that you'll have to work on related to those issues. And that was slide OM2. Now the next slide on this page is also titled Mechanistic, and it's the next slide in the series, and it's OM3. Now here's some more uh, concepts related to o Mechanistic. Close adherence to a chain of command, and I have an excellent story on chain of command, and I'll probably have to get to it in the next podcast. Um, but here's what to look at. Well, let's see. Let's go ahead and talk about the chain of command, because we're running out of time anyway. The chain of command. If you were to um, um, 